Among Japanese brands here in America, Subaru has been enjoying very consistent sales growth every year. They're also enjoying a lot of owner loyalty and satisfaction rates among younger millennial buyers. So as you can see, Subaru isn't going to stop anytime soon. And for 2022, they are introducing a new trim level addition to their second best-selling model, the Outback. As you can see, I've got this new 2022 Outback Wilderness right behind me. And this week, I'm gonna drive this vehicle in the real world. And we're gonna find out, has Subaru managed to preserve the everyday livability of this vehicle while adding a healthy dosage of off-road capability? Stay tuned to find out. So when I last tested the Subaru Outback Wilderness, I was in upstate New York at an off-road course that I drove up to, but I really only had the car for a couple of hours and I, and I proved to you guys that the vehicle is off-road capable. Subaru had set up this really amazing off-road course that I put the vehicle through. So if you haven't watched that video, be sure to click in the link in the description below. This video is mostly gonna focus on the on-road dynamics, what it's like to live with, with the Outback Wilderness and if Subaru has managed to preserve kind of the everyday livability of this car despite lifting it by nearly an inch. Now, the Subaru Outback has always been a really great car for a lot of just everyday consumers. This is a car that is still squarely a midsize station wagon, although Subaru doesn't like to use that word. It's a dirty word. They like to say it's an SUV. Uh, its overall length is around 192 inches long. Wheelbase is 108 inches long. This is around 10 inches to a foot longer versus a compact SUV like Subaru's own Forester or a Honda CRV or a Toyota RAV4. So this is gonna give you more trunk space, more rear seat legroom than those vehicles. You get around 39 and a half inches of legroom back there, a maximum of 75.7 .7 cubic feet of cargo space, which is about the same if not a little bit more than those compact SUVs. And from the driver's seat here, this vehicle gives you a very nice high seating position. Nine and a half inches of ground clearance, like I said. The front end of this car also does a really good job of resisting damage because you have all of that additional cladding, the plastic bumpers, which help to um, take away you know, areas of paint that could get damaged. In fact, driving this vehicle on a long trip to test the fuel economy, I noticed that all those cicadas that are on the, the uh, East Coast over here get slammed into the front and I'm not really so worried about the paint like I would on a vehicle that has a really you know, nicely finished front end. So again, Subaru nailed the modern or the rugged aspect of this car. Uh, it's very durable, it's very utilitarian. And that's kind of the beauty of an Outback is you can drive it every day, use it for your everyday stuff. You don't have to worry about it getting too nasty or too damaged. Yet, these new versions have all the tech and convenience features that one could want, although I still don't like the fact that I can't get the Harman Kardon stereo with this car, which I would like to get. Um, you can't get cooled seats or heated steering wheel, although you get heated seats and heated back seats. Um, so there are still reasons why you'd want to go for the touring grade model. Um, I'm not entirely sure I would pick this model specifically, but I do like what Subaru has done with the look, with these 17 inch wheels, the suspension lift, the skid plates. This is an Outback that definitely stands out and other Subaru owners I noticed were looking at this thing because they're just wondering what is Subaru Wilderness? Now, when I first tested the zero to 60, I got just under six seconds. I'm going to retest it right now because I want to see what I can do on my local roads. All right, we'll try brake torquing it a tad. Wow, that is very impressive. Very, very impressive. <laughs> I got 5.56 seconds. Now that was slightly downhill on that grade, but still that is very fast i mean this is a car that you could blow the doors off of a wrx still i said that in the first video i'm going to hold to that uh for those of you who are unsuspecting of just how fast these subaru wagons are with their cvts with their 2.4 liter turbo engines this is still a very fast car it has plenty of power i mean when i took this vehicle out on the highway i noticed that there was plenty of passing power. Um, the transmission does a really good job of putting the, seat, the turbo engine right in the meat of its power band. I did notice that at times, this vehicle doesn't feel quite as smooth as I'd like. You have to kind of reteach yourself how to drive this car with the CVT. The CVT is very responsive, but if you're driving it like a traditional automatic, uh, you're gonna notice that it kind of gets a little jerky at times. So you have to reprogram how, you know, your right foot's going to put the pedal down when you're you know, demanding more power. Uh, but other than that, just having that learning curve with getting the smoothness right, this is still a really easy car to daily drive, even on the highway, if you guys plan on just taking this mostly on the road. 
Now, in terms of the driver assistance tech, Subaru says that when they lifted this vehicle, they adjusted the eyesight system so it would still work properly, um, even though we've got that lift. A lot of owners lift these vehicles up and then the eyesight stops working. It still works properly. I'm going to say that right away. However, Subaru's eyesight system can be infuriating at times because it is so annoyingly vocal and whenever it shuts off the lane departure alert, whenever you cross over the lane marker, whenever it turns it off, um, it's just a very annoying car uh, that constantly beeps at you and it makes your passengers think that you're a terrible driver. It makes you feel like you're a terrible driver. The only way you can turn off that stupid beep when it turns off the lane departure alert is if you turn off the system entirely. I don't like that. I wish Subaru would allow me to turn off just the beeps because I want the system to obviously be active but it doesn't need to be beeping infuriatingly at me because it makes me annoyed with the car. Um, so that's kind of my biggest gripe with Subaru's eyesight. It works incredibly well though. The adaptive cruise control works okay. Although I did notice in stop and go traffic, it does get a little bit confused uh, when the lead car kind of changes lanes and then there's another car in front, it can get confused in those instances. But you know, the active lane keep assist does work well. I like the fact that Subaru was one of the first to introduce a system where if the car in front of you moves and you don't move, it actually beeps at you and tells you that the lead car has moved ahead to tell you before somebody honks at you from behind. So that's all great technology uh, that Subaru, again, um, started doing very, very early. There's the lane departure alert that, again, gets super annoying if they, you can't turn off the beeping. Now, in terms of comfort, the StarTech seats are also pretty comfortable. I like how they are very cushy. I like how the headrest here is nicely adjustable. Um, and there are times where I guess I might miss the Napa leather, but this is a nice uh, you know, waterproof material. What I do miss are the cooled seats that my Touring model had. Remember, I had an Outback Touring XT for a few months uh, that was the autumn green metallic. Uh, so this car kind of you know reminds me of that vehicle and i like dry i like driving the outback it's got plenty of power plenty of capability i'm just not entirely sure that subaru threw in the right options uh, when they were giving us the wilderness model we'll try another run here And here on more level ground, I got 5.75 seconds, which is matching the time that I got with this vehicle when I was out in New York. So again, plenty of power, um, plenty of responsive power. It's got a great transmission that puts the engine right in the meat of its power band. So I have no complaints with that. I'm glad that Subaru included the turbo engine with this car and they also lowered the final drive ratio, which makes this the quickest of all the Outbacks, probably by a smidge because remember, it's not that much heavier. The wheels aren't even that much larger. Um, the tires are the same size. So really where it did lose out is in the fuel economy. I averaged around 24 MPG in this vehicle on the highway and pure highway driving. That is around a four to five MPG reduction versus what I got in my Touring XT. And you can blame those roof rails. You can blame the all-terrain tires. It's a decent compromise. You're still going to do roughly around 380 to 450 miles of range in this vehicle, which is great. It runs on regular gas. Um, so. It is still a practical car, yet I like how it sits up even higher. You have the off same off-road or ground clearance as like a Toyota 4Runner or a regular Jeep Wrangler, which is just incredible. Um, so for those of you who wanted the most capable Outback, this is still also one of the most livable Outbacks. It just doesn't have enough of the tech and luxury features that I personally wanted. So make sure that you're okay with that if you're gonna choose this trim level. So with a starting price of just under $27,000 for a base Outback, clearly this is very affordable for most American families, which is no surprise to me while Su why Subaru was able to sell just under 14,000 of these in May. Total sales in 2020 were just around $153,000. This was right behind the Subaru Forester, which did 176,000 sales in all of 2020. Now, as you can see, the Wilderness version is going to appeal to more of a niche buyer. And after spending a full week driving this vehicle out on the roads, I already drove this vehicle in New York on an off-road course. I'm pretty impressed with what Subaru has done here. They've definitely preserved the on-road capability and dynamics of the standard Outback, but they're also giving us an increased ride height that you're going to like if you guys like to sit up high. The ride quality is also still good. The noise levels are still good. It's got plenty of power from that turbo engine. Uh, and even though the fuel economy did go down a little bit, I think it's a worthy sacrifice considering the extra capability that you get with this car. I'm just not entirely sure that I would personally buy one. I, I probably would still go with a touring version because 
Uh, the touring model is only around $2,000 more and it gets you some of those tech features that I really prefer in my everyday daily driver. Uh, so I'm hoping that Subaru may consider offering the Harman Kardon stereo on this because that's probably the biggest reason why I wouldn't choose this one. I'd be willing to give up the heated steering wheel and cooled seats, but I really must have that, that lovely Harman Kardon stereo that you get on the Limited and the Touring Grade models. Now, speaking of which, this Wilderness version starts at around $36,995. It's around $1,800 more than the Onyx XT edition, around $1,000 less versus the limited grade. The only option it's missing is the sunroof, the Harman, or the navigation and the reverse automatic braking for another $1,800. All in this one here is just under $39,000, which represents a good uh, value for money. The Outback has always been strong value for money. So if you're in the market for a unique lifted station wagon from the factory, uh, and you're okay with giving up some of the luxury and tech features that you get with the upper trims of the Outback, be sure to put this one here at the very top of your list. But with all that said, I hope you guys have enjoyed my full overview on the 2022 Subaru Outback Wilderness Edition. If you're also looking to see the latest cars I'm testing, be sure to follow me on Instagram at redline underscore reviews. Like us on Facebook. And as always, guys, please keep subscribing to the Redline Reviews YouTube channel for all the latest reviews. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you all in the next video.